Hey, this is Rob Lawrence from SolveTech, and I'm going to give a presentation on the new ASTM standard for measuring the thickness of plastic film and the variability of plastic film. I co-authored this standard along with the um, ASTM committee, my colleague Doug Lawrence. So if you have any questions about the standard, feel free to reach out, out to us here at SolveTech, and we'll be happy to help you. All right, let's get into it. I'm going to go over why thickness data and offline gauging is important talk about the new ASTM standard, the industry impact of that standard, and go through some case studies, and then at the end I'll summarize. So the importance of thickness. Thickness is one of the key parameters that defines film. When you think about film, it's thin. Uh, that's what makes it film. And thickness uniformity affects the product performance, including strength, permeability, optical properties, puncture resistance, and then secondary and converting processes, including print speed, sealing, material handling, and roll formation. And all of these things matter to film buyers and users. So if we have good thickness data, we can, we can do continuous improvement of our uniformity of our, our materials. We can have traceability of our, of our quality. Um, we can do machine to machine comparisons, meaning we can look at how one piece of equipment is performing next to another. <clears throat> we can do plant to plant comparisons to see how uniformity changes from plant to plant and who's performing and why. We can also do competitive analysis to see how we stack up against our competitors. And of course we can do a great job when it comes to quality assurance, getting good accurate data in a short period of time. So why did the industry require a new standard? The industry is moving towards thinner and thinner films. This might be called down gauging or gauge optimization. But thin films are harder to make uniform on a percentage basis and they're harder to measure uh, and they, demanding, they demand better instrumentation. And this also created many issues with contact technology because of the limitations of contact technology when it came to thin materials. The com competition is increasing and requiring higher performance, so people are looking to optimize more and more, and uh, that's that's driving quality. The industry also has dispute a lot of disputes about average gauge as well as government requirements, and we need NIST traceable measurements. And NIST is the National Institute of Standards and Technology. These are the guys that hold the kilogram and all that, so we can trace it back to density and. Um, weight and uh, dimensions so that we can we find thickness and this traceably. So the title of the new standard is the standard test method for determining plastic film thickness and thickness variability using a non-contact capacitance thickness gauge and this falls under the uh, D20.19 uh, committee of the ASTM. So what is a non-contact capacitance thickness gauge? Uh, basically there's an electric field and you're placing material in the electric field and that's causing a disturbance to the field. Um, this technology has some great uh, attributes when it's executed properly and um, it can make an excellent measurement tool especially when it comes to thickness. So what is profiling? So profiling is how we use non-contact gauging technology in a practical way to look at the thickness and variability of our film across the roll, um, around the, uh, the bubble and blown film, or across the extruder and cast film. So this gives us a picture of what the uh, extrusion looks like and gives us a lot more context than just measuring one point or a single point. And another important aspect of it is it does it very quickly and, cre and creates a lot of data points. So we're moving from a small amount of bad data slowly with the old standard and a micrometer. And we got the new standard coming and we're trying to get a large amount of good data quickly using an advanced profiler. So our goal is to quickly and easily get the data. So we, we scan the strip, we can look at it linearly or in a polar plot uh, depending on the situation. Usually the linear uh, plot's going to be for a roll or, or cast film and the uh, the polar plot's going to be for blown film. So now we're talk more about the new standard and versus the old standards. We're looking at single point contact measurements to non-contact profiling. 
And D6988 is the, is the contacting standard, but it's got many practical issues for films under 50 microns thick. It's slow for profiling, affected by dirt, can deform film. You have operator error issues in terms of how hard they press or things like that. And then there's R&R uh, &R studies that have been done, and, and, and they find that for variability analysis, it's really bad R&R, &R, especially for films under 25 microns. R&R &R is repeatability and reproducibility. So some highlights from this new standard, it's repeatable to plus or minus 0.1 microns, which is a 10x improvement over the other standard, so an order of magnitude improvement. Um, it defines profiling, which takes a reading every 3.2 millimeters across the entire film specimen. Now profiling could be every 3.2 millimeters or every 1 millimeter, but it depends on the width of the measurement zone. So if the measurement zone is 3.2, then the uh, measurement's taken every 3.2 or less. Uh, if it's 1.8, then it's taken every 1.8 or less, for example. So every area around the film is therefore effectively measured when you take increments as wide as your measurement area. We, we have transverse direction and machine direction variability profiling defined in the standard. And again, we, we're again focusing on this NIST traceable calibration for the device which we believe is going to be critical for industry. This will help dispute this will help with disputes regarding average thickness. And dirt and contamination are no longer a big concern. If you get a dust particle under the measurement zone in a non-contact capacitance device, it's really not a problem and that allows you to put the devices out on the production floor and just um, have less error as well uh, just just from accidental particles getting onto the contact probe. So here's an R&R &R study that we did and we, we compared the repeatability and reproducibility of a micrometer versus a PR2000. We used a blown film that is 0.8 mils thick or about 20 microns thick. Acceptable R&R &R is less than 30 percent, good is less than 10. The results were the contact had, a six, had an R&R of 69% versus the non-contact of 3%. So the non-contact device proved to have excellent R&R while the contact had an unacceptably high R&R. The new standard will, what this translate into the, is the new standard will actually give us meaningful data. So we can visualize R&R here um, where we do the overlays of two back-to-back -back graphs. So we have the first run and the second run. So the first run being the blue line, the second run being the red line, and you can see how closely they match when you do the exact same um, sample. And uh, it's very tight. And uh, you know that, that helps you know that you're getting good data. So now I'm going to talk about the industry impact of the new standard. It, so what the main things it does is it creates a standardized measurement method for people to buy and sell film on thickness and thickness variability. So that means if you say, well, I want to buy film that's plus or minus 5% variability, you can use this measurement method to define what, you're, what you mean in a quantifiable way, in a way that you can measure. And this all provides a foundation for the data collected by uh, producers and converters because now they have a standard for that data and now it can be used in a more uh, broad way. And now customers will be able to better distinguish between suppliers because they can see what they are buying potentially. So if people use the standard to define variability and they use the same set of criteria, they can put the suppliers to uh, the same set of criteria and compare them. This should lead to less rejections and better customer and supplier relationships uh, throughout the industry because if uh, buyers set certain expectations then the producers know those expectations before they ship and this will reduce the number of uh, rejections. And I also believe that as the industry can see quality more this is going to help the industry be less price uh, sensitive and more quality oriented. And because I, I believe when you can't distinguish upon quality, all you really can distinguish upon is price. So 
you go for uh, you you go for the guy offering you the lower price if you can't distinguish any differences. So hopefully this will help quantif create quantifiable differences between uh, different options. So how does this help us in in different ways? So in, for in continuous improvement, we can analyze thickness profiles reliably, and then we can see small and large incremental process improvements, and we can improve also improve a line that has no gauging so we can use this technology to um, get more out of our existing equipment and we can also identify defects more quickly reducing waste throughout the industry it also allows us to compare lines and plant sites so what I mean by this is when you have online gauging systems for example they can all be different it makes it really difficult to do comparisons because the gauging technology might be different and the software reporting that reading may be different and they might have different levels of smoothing and there's all, all of the different things but basically you can't really do apples to apples uh, comparisons unless everything's exactly the same and this allows us to do that with the offline measurement and the standard and this helps us identify high performing or low performing lines and plants and then we can um, you know, basically fix what's wrong with the low performing plants and replicate what's going on with the high performance uh, operations and, and, and extrusion lines. And this also helps us to verify the online gauge operations. So you can actually check that your online gauge is doing what it says it's doing in a quantifiable way that again matches a standard and matches uh, everything throughout the whole process. This, this part goes towards people that are buying films or doing competitive analysis and that's incoming product inspection. So if you're a converter you can use this to do incoming product inspection and you can actually um, match your calibration to the supplier and verify that they're sending you what they say they're sending you. And I also think this has a really big uh, impact when it comes to equipment selection because how do you know who makes the best production line? You know, does everybody make the same claim? Um, I would think that, you know, under a given set of conditions, there is one best option. And how do you identify that? And do you know if you're spending your money in the correct way? I also think this can help with polymer selection and uh, additive impacts. So like if you put an additive, like let's say you put calcium in the film, how is that affecting uniformity of that film? Um, you know, you can see if it's improving it or making it worse and those kinds of things. And you can see if, uh, you know, you're making the right selection in terms of polymer, like does that polymer extrude uniformly? Uh, is that helping your process or hurting your process? So we also can look at customer satisfaction. I mean, customers, we're, we're moving into industry 4.0. You probably heard that term a lot, basically. We're in the information age. Customers want information. They want to know that you're collecting data on everything you're doing. They want to be able to go back and look. So traceability uh, really helps improve the quality of your company and, and the, the feeling your customers get. And, and you can provide your customers with quality reports that are NIST traceable, so there's no dispute. Uh, as long as everything's been done properly into the standard, you can, you can show a NIST traceable uh, report uh, from, for quality and you can generate that report quickly on your side so it doesn't take a lot of time. And this avoids, again, shipping out of spec material and then avoiding customer rejections where, which are costly and damaging to your relationships. <clears throat> and when you have all of this together, you can resolve conflicts quickly and easily. And we're gonna go into some case studies. Now we're gonna get into our first case study, resolving a $200,000 problem. So we had a film producer and a film converter and they were having a dispute regarding film thickness uh, regarding fi the film thickness of what they were buying and selling. They had a 10 to 15 percent rejection rate. Basically the material would get to the converter, the converter would get it out, take it to the line, they would find it wasn't the right thickness, they had to repackage it, put it back, it was costing them a lot of time and money. Um, it, w it, it was costing the converter a hundred thousand dollars in six months and it cost the producer another hundred thousand dollars in six months because they had to ship the material back remake the lot and then redo the whole thing so total this was costing them two hundred thousand dollars and also the relationship 
obviously was was getting very strained. And this was an important relationship for the supplier. Um, the, the converter was one of their biggest customers. Fortunately, both had SolveTech profilers and they called me to see if I could help them with their problem. So before this was a standard, I basically implemented the standard for them and I nistraceably calibrated both of their instruments to match each other. Now that they were matching, they were all on the same page. So the supplier knew what thickness he was getting, and then when the um, converter received the material, they could verify that as well, and everything was matching up just, just right. So one year later, the rejections went from 10 to 15% to 0.5%. So that's a huge reduction, and the relationship between the two companies is now very good. The, the, the QC manager at the converter said, I can see the supplier's quality improving all the time and I keep praising them in all their quality reports and now basically the problem has gone away. So they were very, very happy and this is just one instance where we were able to implement the standard and solve um, the dispute over average thickness. Here's another case study about how someone can use this technology and standard to actually improve the quality during production. So you can see here we have a blown film line and we're going to profile the bubble shape around that, which means the thickness around the bubble, um, and then overlay the die bolt pattern. This is really helpful to people for in, in this example that didn't have gauges on the line. So if you don't have full automated bubble control and you just have a, a regular standalone blown film line with no gauging, this is the most cost-effective way that you can get process improve, you know, big process improvements um, really quickly and easily. So you can see that if you had five lines, for example, and bought one profiler, that's only six thousand dollars per line. Let's see what kind of process improvements one producer got. Step one, you can see the shape of their bubble here in, in the left, and uh, it's obviously way out of shape. So they did the first profile, they can see where they need to make adjustments. They adjusted the air ring first. Next, they got this as, a, as they cut a sample off the end of the roll and they looked at the profile. I could see that they had made an improvement, but it was still outside of their specification. But they had made a 33% improvement. They made another adjustment. They adjusted some die bolts and loosened some die bolts. So basically uh, tightening this side and loosening this side and then they redid the profile and you can see the reduction in variability once again now this is a 52 percent improvement they went back and then adjusted more die bolts and then they got this here so they went from a range of 1.78 mils down to 0.6 mils which was a 66 percent improvement for them and that's a, a really great um, example of how you can manually adjust the equipment using a cost-effective approach and um, and really get great results and this is basically using the device in the standard so in summary good thickness data is critical to the operations of a film producer or converter and the new SDM standard gives buyers and sellers a good way to quantify thickness and thickness uniformity it creates a faster and more accurate QA procedure to help ensure quality and improve buyer and supplier relationships and you can use the standard and the data to make process and operational improvements. Feel free to reach out to me with questions or our call. You can email me or call or visit our website, gauging.com, and see the device for yourself. And um, we offer sample testing and all that good stuff.